Hey guys, continuing on with this fucked up series. Uh, okay, everything's moved out, everything's broke down, everything's out tank wise as far as the other house. Um, might have, uh, in the last vet I asked about the deep sand bed, I just went ahead and trashed it. So. If you made a bunch of comments for keeping it or what have you, thanks, but it just, uh, <laughs> yeah, when you set up tanks, as you all probably know, you shouldn't really be tearing them down at the minimum as possible, as they say, but, you know, shit happens, you know, life goes on. Um, unfortunately, the way things worked out, as I wanted to do, is I wanted to set this up. Um, the aqua clears are going to stay on here until I got that set up and the sump set up. Unfortunately, the CPR overflows um, because they sat, they didn't have any water running through them for probably almost four days. So, unfortunately, the uh, gaskets around the bulkhead shrunk or failed in any event. Um, they just started leaking both of them. And they weren't like it before, so that's the only thing I can attribute to is the uh, gasket deal. So, yeah, they failed, and I uh, I tried silicone and the shit out of them, and uh, still nothing. So, needless to say, I had to trash them and, uh, you know, change my plans, because I was going to go ahead and set this up first and get it running, just have that going through the sump and filtrate the shit out of it you know, skimmer and everything. I still got water in here. I'm skimming just to keep things running. Um, return pump obviously is, is off. I have uh, one damsel that made it in here. Oop, there it goes. She's kind of freaked out. Not digging it in there, but yeah, I had, uh, I gave uh, the flame angel to my buddy who helped me move stuff over here. Um, because he was eyeballing it pretty good. And his jumped out of the tank. And, uh, you know, I wasn't sure if it was going to survive, you know, recycling and all that good shit. Because no matter what, as much water as you put in here from an old tank and as much, you know, as, as quickly as you can move rock, it, it's, it still has to go through a cycle. No matter what. Um, so I cleaned all out. Vinegared, rinsed. So that's going to have to cycle. So that's why I got shit running there. Um... So yeah, I couldn't do what I wanted to do, which was set up the uh, overflows on both these tanks. And as you can see from the height-wise, get a far shot. They're just, uh, you know, slightly different. Like I said, this stands a little bit lower. Still needs to be cleaned off, but I had to get it in here as quick as possible and get this rock in it. Because it was sitting outside in buckets for four days, and it was basically dying off and smelling like shit. So I had to get them on here quick. So I had to go ahead and purchase two more aqua clears. Which, you know, I mean in the in the end game, you know, I mean these are all gonna be used on the 120 later anyway, once they get off of here. So you know, it's it's all good. It's not like it's gonna go to waste, but yeah, this this rock is gonna have to go through a, a whole nother complete cycle. Um as you can see, I butted the tanks right up against the uh, the sump, so that's kind of directly under the window, which, you know, it's not going to be too much of a big deal, because the sun only comes in there, you know, towards the afternoon, and it's very faint. Um, you might be able to see the glare, but that's just because, it's, you know, that's the way the camera is. There's not really any streams of sun, so it's not getting direct sunlight even though it is bright there, so, you know, I don't know, I might end up covering that with something, but in any event, yeah, things drastically changed, so, you know, I'm continuously making salt water, and, you know, I'm on my last bit of salt, still trying to get this up to salinity, right now it's like at a, I don't know, about 30, 32, 33, maybe, parts PPTs, so um, tried to save a little bit of the clear book because I 
really started to like that stuff. So, um, Kato's all gone. I, you know, like I said, I tr I trashed all the sand in here and the Kato and all that because it just once we got it drained and tried to pick it up, it was a heavy motherfucker, and it was sloshing and yeah, it was it was a mess. So I knew that was just going to be nothing but even more dead shit floating around the water. So I just went ahead and they're both going to be you know bare bottom. I mean, no sand, no mud, no nothing here. It's going to be heavily mechanical and filter, floss. You know, I'm just going to have to, uh, you know, Wally World, you can go buy the pillow flossing for like 10 bucks for a huge bag. So, you know, I'll just, I'll just use that for the time being until I get everything up and going the way it should. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, I was going to throw some of that live rock because it was only going to be in a bucket. For you know a day at the most and then I was gonna rearrange in here and get everything placed and get this tank completely set and going you know with the overflow and everything but obviously that changed the rock was dying so that's gonna have to go through a complete curing process again because it's got you know slimy crap all over it from sponges dying like I said it's been in buckets outside for four days um, you know direct sunlight and cold temperatures at night so it you know and used to cure and go through that completely full process again. So I got the I got two Aqua Clear 50s on here. And I got a you know Eheim in there just blowing shit around and mixing salt and just keeping the flow moving in there. And I'll be doing water changes, you know, like crazy on this testing. You know, until that can pretty much chill out it's probably gonna be another three weeks which is okay because um i'm getting my uh overflows from uh was a life reef i think the ones that don't need the aqua lifter pumps so i can uh you know plumb this in the way i want to plumb it um, unfortunately i didn't set it up exactly the way i wanted to but you know the good thing is the chiller fits in both of these cabinets you know underneath and uh you know the canister filter will also fit underneath so now I'll just, I can just hide them, it'll just be a different, you know, plumbing aspect coming out and into it, you know, it'll just be more, which I didn't really want because I want to be able to reach in here easily to be able to change the sock and, you know, the, uh, dump the skimmer and be able to keep this, you know, as clean as possible, so that's basically your heart, your, you know, your pulmonary and cardiac of the system. So... That's where I'm at at this point. Um, so yeah, everything's good thing about it is corals are starting to open up more in here and everything's starting to get chilled. I have two fish only in here. I got the uh, is that the pseudochromus I think and the tang and that's it. The uh, um, or is that the yeah it's a dolly back I think. Whatever. Um, the chromos died in transit. Um, one of the blue damsels died, and that yellow toe is the only one that lives, so I threw him in there because I don't want him going in the reef. Um, he'll end up going in there if he survives living in there with uh, Rucker the crab. That's the Boston crab that came back from uh, Boston in my uh, co worker's suitcase. But anyway, that's uh, <laughs> trials and tribulations. That's what's happening at this point. And uh, we'll pretty much uh, keep cruising along and uh, hopefully be able to salvage most of everything that I can. So, appreciate you guys for watching. Like I said last video, if you made a bunch of comments about deep in the, or keeping the deep sand bed, thanks, but it just didn't. Uh, didn't pan out didn't work out so all right i will uh see you guys next time with the continuation of this um and thanks for tagging along awesome.